This is Worldview, and thank you for joining us live from our studio right here in South Africa. I'm Yvonne Katsande. Well, today we'll take a look at the Fees Mass for Movement. South Africa's university students have been protesting loudly and violently in mass action to push for free higher education. But it seems they're missing some crucial points. No, at least all that there is uh, no such thing as free higher education. Someone must always pay for it. Now, in countries where university education is free, the people who pay are those whose children don't secure sufficient grades to enter the system. And usually, these children come from less advantaged backgrounds. In a nutshell, free higher education benefits richer people and elite. So, South Africans who will benefit from killing tuition fees will be those from wealthier families who can afford to pay for these expenses. According to some, focusing on the money is to miss the point. The real issue is that vast numbers of people don't qualify for university and many struggle when they get there, which is revealed in the high dropout rate. Now, to look at this topic and help me analyze it is joining me in studio three gentlemen so that we can talk more about it. On my immediate right, I have uh, Runyararo Merekumombe. And Runyararo Merekumombe is from the Savannah Investment Group. He's the founder, actually, of Savannah Investment Group. And right immediately is Brian Lamini, a researcher in student affairs right here in South Africa. And to my far right is Alua Baleni, who is a political analyst also here in South Africa. Gentlemen, good evening and thank you for joining us. Thank good you. evening. Thank you. So we're talking about the Fees Must Fall movement. This does not only apply to South Africa, though, of course, tonight we take a look at South Africa as the role model, but this is an issue that the whole of Africa needs to address, I suppose. Now, I'll just start by talking about what one analyst says. This is from Yohan Fori. Yohan Fori argues that blanket university fee reduction benefits the wealthy and slows change. Fori adds that the wealthy are more likely to access tertiary education, and as such, a blanket reduction in university fees is like a subsidy for the rich or a tax on the poor. What is your take on this whole thing? I'll start with you, Runya. My take regarding the fees must fall is to take a long-term view of it. Starting off a tertiary education, I believe that education is like a tree mm -hmm. where the roots are the basic foundational education. If fees are going to fall at the tertiary level, then we are trying to water a tree from the top. In other words, we are sprinkling water on the leaves, hoping that the tree is going to thrive. I am of the opinion that let us build it from the ground up. As in, we should start by offering just the basic education. We're talking about primary care. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, we are saying there are many kids who drop out before getting to matric level. We are saying let us have those in school. Mm -hmm. Let us get them schooling before we address the tertiary education system. Okay, so what is your take on the fees mass no, movement? Look, look I, I agree with what, uh, I fully agree with what Runya says, but uh, we are in this empirical um, uh, demand right now um, in South Africa where the situation is with the tertiary level. Mm -hmm. The uprisings that we are seeing are with the tertiary students. So I think for, for the peace or rather to address this issue that we are at, we have to address the issue of tertiary education. We have to see ways, find ways, if free primary, free um, tertiary education it's is feasible. feasible. You know, that's yes. what I'm saying. Going back to the court that you are, you are reading, I think the guy is looking at the fact that for, for the possibility of free tertiary education, we will ultimately have to have taxes increased. And by increasing tax, the poor, in a way, will suffer the most. Absolutely. Hence, he says the poor will be suffering the most and it's a subsidy to the rich. But if you look at it in, in a sense that um, if the student wants graduation, once the student graduates, he's the one who pays back the tax. So we have to progressively introduce something as, as a graduate tax. So mm -hmm. for the student who benefits from subsidized or rather free tertiary education, they pay a greater margin or rather an, an increased margin of the tax. But isn't so the this way more like a student loan, which obviously is also... No, 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 not really. Still hounding not some really. students no, that have Not paid graduated. back as a student loan, okay. but paid back in the form of tax. And, and, and therefore, in the long run, 
you will pay it in more in more number of years. So it will be implemented as a tax, not as a student loan. Okay, Alua, what's your take on this? Um, it is uh, a very difficult one, but uh, my sense is that uh, fees must fall. It's a genuine call. It's a genuine call. Yes, in the sense that uh, I mean, I, I I think fees must fall as a movement. Is actually a cry that there are certain things that are not happening in the right way. So, and I know that a lot of people have actually said destruction of property, they've put, I mean, value into what has been destroyed, but they forget why students are doing that. And the reason why students are doing that is that it is a multifaceted problem that the state has not addressed. And one of the problems is that and the people who are expected to pay the fees for the students are the very people who are not actually getting paid anything. Because the poor people would, would, would be expected to have their children going to, 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 I mean, to, to, to enter into university. And, but, and, for, and, and for the fact, university, university uh, costs are not very cheap. It is very expensive, letter and tuition on its own. It's not, it's not, it's not cheap. I was actually going to ask that. You, yeah. You've all passed universities. Yeah. What have been your experiences? And can we actually say this is the case of the government not fully providing or funding, you know, research equipment, necessary, whatever tools that are needed to make this, you know, easier, tertiary education, if not all education, starting from the basic education all the way to free, high education. What really are the great shortfalls? What really are the great shortfalls in this situation that we're seeing in South Africa now? I would say South Africa is a developing economy. Mm -hmm. And research has shown that South Africa has got high, the highest dependency ratio. That is, those people who are surviving from the taxes rather than those who are contributing the taxes. If we look at it from a government perspective, to say the government must provide the tuition and they provide it for free, Ultimately, it is the same taxpayers who are overburdened, who are going to have the burden. It keeps of, pinching of on pain. the wrong person. Yes. It keeps pinching on the wrong person over and over again. Yes. So what actually need to do or needs to happen with these students, they are people who are in university. Most of them have probably written one research paper. They should adopt the system which is in the United States of America. Universities like Stanford and Harvard, they produce high-value individuals. Mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg is, came from university, mm -hmm. Harvard, and managed to make the biggest social network. We are saying South African students, instead of protesting, burning property, they should use the education that they have received. They need to research. Africa is lagging behind in terms of technology, infrastructure. Why can they not research? come up with useful plans to implement in society, mm -hmm. which can be funded even by external investors bringing foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. When they do that, they are generating revenue, which they can put back into the university system. Going back and saying to the government, we need you to pay for this, is actually going to the same taxpayers whom they are saying cannot afford the same education. Mm -hmm. OK. And Brian, what's your take on that? Um, my take on this, uh, Yvonne, I would say as much as we, we need to, the students need to pull in their weight on it, mm -hmm. I think the right question to ask is, is free tertiary education feasible? Is it possible? And we need to be looking at this from an angle of solutions in terms but, of how do we cap now but you know what? what is happening right now. Sorry to just cut you okay. short there. Research now has proved that. Some have said it is possible. We okay. have one researcher here in South Africa, a lady researcher. 100%. Yes, who has now done her, she's done her analysis. Okay. And she says it's very feasible to actually have yes. free tertiary education. Yes. And then we have others that are saying that it's a bit too late. We can't actually have free education. Somebody has to pay for it. But yes. then we have models that have done it. That is exactly where, Germany, where, where, for example. where, where I'm going to. Okay. We have Germany. Germany has done it. We have Norway. Norway has done it. Norway has got free tertiary education. And in Norway, the education of Norway is rated amongst the best globally.
Mm -hmm. Now, there are models that we can look at as to how we can do it here in South Africa. My suggestion would be, there's two models that I would like to talk about. One model would be, have gov government already subsidized, government already contributes to tertiary education. The private sector contributes to tertiary education. And the student, in the form of tuition, mm -hmm. contributes to tertiary education to make it a 100% contribution for per student. Now, government contributes about, uh, I think, 39%, talking under correction right now, mm -hmm. towards tertiary education. And the private sector contributes about 30% of that. Mm -hmm. And the remainder is exerted onto the student mm -hmm. in the form of tuition. Now, the stats show that today, government does about 39%, but they used to do 50% contribution okay. towards tertiary education. So it therefore means that government has declined in essence. So if we can have government perhaps reverting back to what the contribution Do was initially, we can go there. Okay. And from that, perhaps maybe speak to the private sector and have them revert go to increase their uh, contribution to 50%. And that ultimately um, adds up to 0% to the student. But now that is one okay. model. All right. <laughs> Second model that I want to, to present here, it's, mm. It's a three-way model where we can have government contributing what they're contributing and the student, uh, the student, the private sector contributing mm -hmm. and the student now contributing in the form of graduate tax, what I talked about earlier. earlier. That's when it. they graduate, they will be paying a higher tax. So they will get into, if perhaps you're in the tax bracket of 30%, Tax, is this not affected though by the high dropout rates that we have in the universities of South Africa? No, no, no. It doesn't if affect. It doesn't affect. There, it? There, there are many concerns um, towards the high dropout in South Africa, um, even. And if we were to take it in the terms of money, speaking under correction, the student who cannot afford, or rather the poor student, has got many things to think about when they are in class. Now, I know Runia might argue with me here, <laughs> but you know, as, as a student, you don't have enough um, books, you don't have enough, th there, are, there are a lot of concerns that come into part, that come into play. Mm -hmm. When you're in the class, you've got to think about how are you going to, to, to do this assignment, because you are limited, you've got limited resources. But if you had somebody, if this education, tertiary education, was covered, the expenses were covered for you, then you'd have your full focus, your full attention towards making it to graduation. And okay. I believe, strongly believe, the graduation rate will, will increase. So you are instance. for the idea that I am free for the idea tertiary that education it is, is possible. possible. We cannot say it's not possible if we don't try it. Let's rather try it and say we failed. Therefore, it's not possible. Okay, now just to our viewers that are watching at home, kindly note that you can actually call us on the number that is appearing on the screen right now and join in the conversation. Let us hear your views, your contributions, questions. If you have any, we'll be more than happy to answer them for you with the panel that I have. Now, Brian, I was just, I was, I was, I was on the same point and saying that what seems to be the problem with Africa? If other countries can actually do it, what seems to be the problem with the Africa, particularly in South Africa? We have quite a lot of uh, foreign students coming into South African universities. So why is it that they are failing to adopt that model that he's talking about where free education is actually feasible. We don't even have free education at the basic level. Let's start off from there. Now we have shot all the way to go to tertiary. So where, where are we getting it wrong as Africa? Um, I, 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 think, I think what we need to understand is that uh, Africa as, as, as a continent actually is still very decolonized. I mean, we countries are independent, for example, but they are still suffering from what we call coloniality. And coloniality is a system that has survived decolonization. And that system is actually an, a Euro-American system that suggests that black people should be employed and not be paid. That suggests that white is better than black. That is, that, is the, that, that is the narrative that is still happening in Africa. And what students are saying, and the reason why students are actually protesting, is that even knowledge itself, because it, that system suggests that anything that is not from Europe, anything that is not from the West, 
is actually should actually be be, be, be downgraded, yeah. even knowledge itself. Because students are saying, for example, you go to vet university, you go to whatever university, you are told that this is an African university, but you go there, the knowledge is not even African. Yeah. So students are actually are not actually talking about fees only, and this is where probably even the state is missing the point. Amongst a lot of things is, of course, fees. But students are saying even, even, even the type of knowledge that is there. I mean, you, 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 you get into a university and you, you, get, you, you go to probably a unit or a division of um, humanities, for example. Mm -hmm. All the theories that are there, you, you, you can't even have a theory of an African scholar. We, yeah. we had protests, protests not so long ago in um, Swanese universities where students were actually talking about the racism. The, the fact thing. of racism yeah. is still very visible. That's what it, that's you can where I went clearly to, tell yeah. between black and white. Exactly. Is, is that bridge ever going to be gapped? Is, can we actually beat that bridge of you know black and white? Because even the mode of education, where even the language of education, of communication, is something that is not African. And if we propose to learn in, Af in, in African language, it seems like it's all up in arms. But why is it taking so long to resolve such issues, especially, particularly in the 21st century. Yeah, you know, you know this, this is, is a sad issue, the point that he's, he's raising. Because, you know, when, when you go into research, when you look at where education began, you will be surprised that education started in Egypt. And Egypt is, is in an Africa. African country. Now, because of this colonization, Africa was colonized even way back, way back. And thus the education has been brought to us to appear as originating from the whites, or rather from the Western countries. Hmm. Now, people like Pythagoras, when you get to university, or rather when you start school, you're told of Pythagoras. Pythagoras got his rule from an Egyptian. And now his rule is attributed to him. So the basics of education come from Africa. It is high time that we start to teach our African kids that they can be proud of themselves, that they can develop something. But because of the colonization of education, I think that is where we have to start. Let us start decolonizing the education that is in the education system. So we're starting all over, we're starting afresh. Now, here's an interesting point that some of the students at WITS, I spoke to some of the students at WITS during the protest, and they say that, Students have also argued that charging fees is against the spirit of the Freedom Charter of 1955, where it appears the government um, had promised things perhaps without envisaging what will the year 2016 be like. So they say that, which was a political aspiration expressed 60 years ago, along with other demands, such as the ending of apartheid. We just spoke about that, and health and housing. Now, these political aspirations were not formulated in the context of political, economic, and educational realities in South Africa in a 2016 model. So the Freedom Charter has come up more often than not in all these process of yeah. fees must fall. So can we blame it all on the Freedom Charter? Can it be amended? What does it resemble, the Freedom Charter? Let me, let me ask you, Alua, what do you think about this? You see, you see, you see I think students have got uh, a legitimate argument. Mm -hmm. because, because the thing is that even if it was the, the, I mean, because the politics would actually drive a lot of things. but. The fact that education, or, I mean, access to universities was actually mentioned. Surely the government should be doing something. Because what is happening currently is that even universities that are actually called your, 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 your former, um, maybe previously white universities, what they've done so far is that they've only changed the, 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 the bodies into black in terms of, I mean, the bodies. But you go into the system inside. The system itself has not it's really adjusted. Wide. You see, because we're talking of students who, are, who will be at university, but they still face racism. The access into the university is still racist, for example. So there's nothing that the Freedom Charter has provided in as far as students are arguing. That they are seated at, 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 at still at the same place, like probably six years ago, where, for example, it is only those who have money, it is only those who are elite, 
who will take their children to university because they can afford to pay the fees. But you have a child from a rural, I mean, place in Limpompo without parents, but they are academically, I mean, able to be in a university, but they are not going to go to university because you go to, to vet university, you go to any university, you need to pay up some certain fees. Mm. If, you are, if you are an international student, upfront they need, uh, I mean, yeah. certain, certain amount of fees. And by the, day, so by the same universities turn around, they say they are African universities. Surely students are saying a Nigerian national cannot be foreign in, in, in South Africa. Because if, if universities are African, I'd rather have students coming from the West being foreign in Africa. You go to Harvard, you're going to pay. But you, you come here, it, I mean, in our own countries, it is very difficult. I mean, you can imagine if a, a student from Swaziland mm. failing to get access to, 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 to education in Africa. Yeah. In, 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 and I remember, a, I think the SRC president of, uh, if it is not Northwest, not Northwest University, it, it was, uh, I think, Univen. He was saying those students don't even want to be in those universities. They would have preferred to be in a university like Vets University, for example. But just because they cannot afford, they are forced to, they are, they are, they are, they are forced to remain there. Yeah. And the, the education, I mean, the privileges that mm. are there compared to, to Vets University are far behind. Mm. But they are forced yeah. to be there because that's the only thing that they can afford. So there is different levels of access to education. And if they don't get the education, they can't really go far yes. in the modern world. Okay, so do you feel that, have universities actually been successful in finding other ways of funding themselves so that perhaps this whole free education becomes a reality at a faster pace? I would say the universities have not done as much as they should have because I would put the ball back in the court of the students mm -hmm. to say how much have they contributed to make their own education as free as possible. This is where we are saying local government, national government, they are faced with many problems. There are challenges where people go and queue up at national government offices. Can students from universities not be able to come up with programs or applications Mm -hmm. which solves those problems. Instead of people going to queue up in one place, mm -hmm. they develop an application which can take a person's fingerprint and be able to relate the information to the necessary department. We have got companies in the private sector that are doing multi-billion contracts with government. In most cases, it's for making a mobile application which does not cost up to five million to do. Mm -hmm. Those students should now look at those opportunities to say what is government giving to the private sector. Mm -hmm. They go and say government, instead of doing this, rather give it to the research institute at universities. In countries like, U like USA, most new technologies come from universities. Facebook came from universities. That's it. Google came from university students. Mm -hmm. When they do that, then the money do we, is Do we have any African the, examples? We have Google, we have Facebook. Do we have any African examples that we can use? Something that came from you, university you, you, and made you know, it in the I, world? I, I wanted to point out the fact that this, these are great things that have been achieved from the other countries, for instance, in the West. These are great people who have come up with innovations in the countries that they are in. Now, certainly the education system that we have here is perhaps not good enough to have the students come up with such ideas. Mm. Perhaps that's the limitation there is. That is what we need to change first, the education system. So that the student, when they are at tertiary, they have the capability. It is happening, it's, it's starting to happen now, and we are seeing it. So I think the education is, in essence, improving a bit, but that is, I, I, I attest that to technology. Okay, so we need to really advance technology in Africa, I suppose. Now, let's just quickly take a, a look at the current situation of the Fees Must Fall movement here in South Africa. The founder of the Fees Must Fall movement, Mnebo Tlamini, is behind bars. Do you think this will deter the students from moving forward? What, what is the future of the Fees Must Fall movement? Do you think they'll get far or they're just making noise for now? It's something that's going to die down because some have argued the fact that for Mlebo to be arrested and be put behind bars, it maybe it's something 
you know, politically motivated somehow to just keep the calm or, you know, just try and distract the students to focus on something because Mlebo is well known for not backing down on anything. You know, he, st he stands strong and firm on what he believes and that is the fees must for movement. But uh, we've had continued protests in different parts of South Africa and even still here at the Fitz University as well, there have been some disturbances nearly every day. So what is the future of the fees must for? And do you think what Mlebo has done, he has he set a good example? Is this a good model of, you know, uh, students trying to fight for what they know? Let's just have a quick brief, probably 20 second, 30 second uh, comment because we're out of time right now. Let's start with you, Alua. I think if there's anything, the, the, stu the, the student movement is even going to, to be more stronger and radical more than it has been before because their demand is still not met. And the, the fall of Mkrebo does not mean anything. It actually inspires students to take it further. Okay, Brian? I, I, I conquer with that uh, as well. I think rather the movement is, is going to get stronger because it ultimately means that whatever he was doing has become, um, has had an impact such that um, government is now addressing the issues. So I think it is, the movement is getting stronger. Something has shifted. Something is happening. Okay, all right. And Runya? My take is that uh, his arrest will serve to weaken the movement. Already mm -hmm. we have seen students shifting from a confrontational stance fearing that they will be caught up and they will also be arrested. Going forward, I believe the movement will continue, but it will be at great loss for time which they are supposed to be studying. Tuition and studies have to yes, move Yes, because the academic year has been ruined already. Yes. yes. So they, it will come down to personal choices. Do I want to be in university for 10 years while protesting or I move on with my life? Wonderful. Thank you very much for shedding light on free education in Africa. Is it feasible or is it not? So, I mean, we had different views. Now to our viewers, many countries that once offered free higher education, such as China, Australia, Mozambique, Kenya and England, have since implemented cost sharing policies and models for one form or another. Now in South Africa, students are demanding free higher education, while some students are demanding free education for the poor. The majority seem to want free higher education for all. So the struggle continues and we'll see what actually happens. What is the future of a free higher education Africa? Yeah. Well, that's all we have time for this evening. Thank you for watching and do join me again next week as we bring you more on the political and current affairs on Worldview. Good evening and thank you for watching.